1977, George Lucas' Star Wars was released in cinemas. It did what most people, even those working on the film, never thought would happen. It made money. It became a cultural phenomenon. An epic saga began, and at the center of it was Luke Skywalker. Over the course of seven years, fans watched as an everyday farmer fulfilled their destiny, overcoming obstacles and challenges, growing into a legendary Jedi Knight. He crafted his own lightsaber, meditated on the teachings from his masters Obi-Wan Kenobi and Yoda, mastering aspects of the Force and ultimately defeating the Empire, bringing peace to the galaxy. 34 years later, the 8th episode in the Skywalker Saga, written and directed by Ryan Johnson, was released, Star Wars The Last Jedi. With it came a different Luke. Within an in-universe period of 30 years, Luke Skywalker had changed. Gone was the legendary Jedi who would bring about a new Jedi Order and maintain peace and justice throughout the galaxy, as the previous Jedi Order had done for over a thousand years. He was replaced by a stubborn old hermit unwilling to believe in the Jedi whom he once fought for. Fans of the franchise were outraged after seeing the beloved character abruptly changed. Some fans defended the new Luke, claiming that the change makes sense, the main argument being that 30 years have passed within the Star Wars universe, while others proclaimed that the character on screen was not their Luke Skywalker. So what is the real reason for why Luke's character doesn't work in The Last Jedi? Within the film itself, the reasoning for Luke's change is shown in a flashback, a fleeting moment in which it appeared into his nephew and former apprentice's mind, seeing destruction and pain and death, instinctively igniting his lightsaber to strike his padawan. The darkness which he sensed building in him, even in moments during his training, had caused Luke to make a decision in fear, a quality, as Yoda stated in The Phantom Menace, would lead one down the path of the dark side. Many have used this to relate Luke back to his characteristics during the previous Star Wars films, The Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi, stating that Luke was always rash, fearing for his friends as well as fighting his father, Darth Vader, with anger. However, this argument doesn't make sense as over 15 years have passed between Return of the Jedi and the moment discussed in this flashback, enough time for Luke to have developed as a Jedi and not be so easily swayed into the traits of the dark side of the Force. On the opposite side of the spectrum are fans who state that Luke Skywalker would never think of attacking his nephew. Mark Hamill, the actor who played Luke Skywalker since the very first Star Wars movie, even supported this idea. Mark Hamill is quoted as saying, I said to Ryan, the writer and director of the film, Jedi's do not give up. I mean, even if he had a problem, he would maybe take a year to try and regroup, but if he made a mistake, he would try and right that wrong. He continues, This is the next generation of Star Wars. So I almost had to think of Luke as another character. Maybe he's Jake Skywalker, he's not my Luke Skywalker. The hero who once saw a glimmer of light in his murderous father, Darth Vader, and still attempted to redeem him, going so far as to sacrifice himself, had so easily decided to attack his own nephew, who had yet to commit any sinful acts in real life. And while this argument is valid to an extent, it is not the real reason for why Luke Skywalker does not work in The Last Jedi. The real reason is very simple, and one that could have easily been rectified had the story and plans for the sequel trilogy, consisting of The Force Awakens, The Last Jedi, and the untitled Episode 9 movie, had been better crafted and executed. Ryan Johnson had no real backstory for why Luke would turn his back on everything he once fought for. He simply liked the idea of this type of character, and wrote the story to work along with it. Luke does not have enough reasoning between Return of the Jedi and The Force Awakens to be alone on the island waiting to live out his life ignorant of the problems plaguing the galaxy, his twin sister, and best friends. The only reason given for why Luke became so drastically different is through one 2-3 minute scene, shown as flashbacks, with only one being accurate. This is not enough time to explain why a character would drastically change their views and turn their back on something they fought so hard for. As stated earlier, Mark Hamill said that Luke would take one year to regroup his thoughts, then return to solve the problem. By even viewing this film through a media and film lens, this is a clear problem in writing. Taking a character who's over 40 years old in terms of cinema and giving them 2 minutes across 2 movies to provide that character development and reasoning is ludicrous. Mark Hamill himself is known for having to make up his own reasoning for why Luke would be an old, grumpy man who is cut off from the Force. Hamill says he left the Jedi to raise this young child and marry this woman and the child got hold of the lightsaber and accidentally killed himself. He continues, It's nothing to do with the story. 
But when I think about gun violence and you read these tragic stories of kids getting hold of their parents' guns and killing a sibling or themselves, I mean, I had to go to really dark places to get where Luke needed to be for this story. Now, there's something I want to quickly bring up before I conclude. There's one simple change that could have been made to The Last Jedi that would have required no explanation for why Luke would be the way he is, why he would be on the island, and why he would require a map for someone to come and find him. It's all in the one shot of his X-Wing submerged in water. A simple explanation of his X-Wing being damaged and beyond repair as he is alone on the island and the caretakers could live as nomads, not using any technology, as we clearly see them not using any, they use old equipment and they live a very simple life. Hence why he couldn't go to save Han when he sensed that Han was in danger, why he couldn't return to fight Snoke to fight Kylo Ren, and why he couldn't go back to the resistance aid because his form of transport was damaged beyond repair. Possibly the same thing could happen to his communication. Hence why he left the map, as a last resort just in case anything happened and he could not return. This one simple explanation would render all of these reasons as I have previously discussed, as well as my own, useless as the film itself could have and would have explained why Luke is on the island, living the way he is. It's evident that neither J.J. Abrams, Lawrence Kasdan, Michael Arndt, and Ryan Johnson, all of whom have ridden the Skywalker journey in the movies since Return of the Jedi, had not enough explanation for Luke's change in character. Clearly, not enough to tell the actor playing the character. So, no matter what arguments people may provide, whether against or for Luke's change, the real reason for why Luke Skywalker's character doesn't work in The Last Jedi is that the writers themselves do not have a sufficient reason for the change.